this case, you have two options. We can actually you know, convert it into uh, the Angular, which in, in terms of theta, or you can actually change it in terms of the transitional. The reason I'm going to change it in terms of x is because I have too many x's in one theta. One theta. So it would make sense to just change it into the transitional, which is, if you think about it, so we'll work it out. So let's relate theta in terms of x. And if you look at this moment of inertia right here, we automatically know from dynamic that if you have a circle and you have it at a certain radius and you have it, let's say that it turned at a certain angle, let's call this theta, and you want to actually find the linear distance, let's call that x. And to get the linear uh, distance, you, would, you know automatically that x equals theta times the radius. And that should give you the actual length of this right here. So breaking that part, let's translate every term theta into x. So looking at uh, theta double dot, you would automatically know. Look over here. We know that. Let me just get this out of the way. We know that x double dot equals theta double dot times 2r. So if you look at it this way, if we said that this is actually theta, and you just wanted to know the distance, x double dot equals this. Okay? And then uh, if you look at if you realize this, if you see this, k, you have k2x2, and we want to change this in terms of x in one unit. So x2 could be different than x1, which it is in this case. So let's look at x2. And if you look at it closely, if you really want to calculate the distance, and let's call this also, it's going to be theta. There you go. This is r. And we want to know what this right here, what this distance is. And in this case, it's x2. Based on this picture, we know that x2 equals theta times r. And same thing, we can look at relation into x1 with this circle. We know that x1 equals theta times 2r because it's connected to the outer radius. Okay? Having said that, so we have x2 equals theta times r, and uh, x1 equals theta times 2r. So we automatically can relate that x1 is actually in terms of x, since x equals theta times 2r, and then you have double x, and uh, x double dot equals theta double dot times r. So pretty much we need to change everything into this term. So the first thing you need to know is x2, we need to change it to theta r, so we can connect it to this, because this theta equals this theta right here. These are all the same angles. So we'll go to x2, in this case, as you see, and we can break this down into k2, and now we change x2 from this, we'll change it to theta r, times r. Okay? And then we can also change this theta in terms of the x double dot. And right here, based on this right here, we know that theta double dot equals x double dot over 2r. So we can actually change this to Now here, we can actually make this shorter, and we know that it's actually k2 theta r squared. So let me just put that down right here. Now, having said that, you want to change this in terms of x? Well, we know that we have x2. Now we know that x2 equals theta r. 
and we want to actually put it in this term, since we know that this is actually equivalent, and we'll solve for theta, in this case, using this formula right here, theta equals x over 2r. So we go back here, and we will say that this becomes now k2, and you have, now this theta changes to x over 2r. Okay? x over 2r. set that. Now, everything, if you look at our equation, now it's all in one unit, and it's all in terms of x. So your equation of motion would come out to be, watch this carefully, I have moment of inertia, and I'm going to say it's actually divided by 2r, plus the mass, 2r in terms of x double dot plus k2 and then you know how we have here 2r in r square so this actually becomes 2 and that changes to r so pretty much what we have here is x2 divided by 2 r plus K1, and there you go, times 2R, since they're all in terms of X. X right here. And we'll look at the damping. And it would be, actually in this case, since we're doing the equation of motion, it's supposed to be in terms of X double dot, plus x dot plus the x equals zero. So let's just take this out of the way right now and put the damping over here to make it all correct. So I'll take the damping and then what we have here we have 2r c in terms of x dot plus k2 over r Sorry about that. X2 over 2, R plus K1, 2R, X equals 0. So there you go. That's your equation of motion right over here. And after you get to that point, you can actually solve for the, the natural frequency based on this equation. And your natural frequency... The natural frequency is considered as omega n equals square root k over m, or kt, which is the trend of the rotational spring, over the moment of inertia. But having this, our omega n, our natural frequency, would be square root, this whole term right here, write it down just to clarify it. K2 over 2R plus K1 2R divided by your mass, which is this right here. All of it, which will be in this case J of 2R point, the whole purpose of this was just to show you how to uh, derive the equation of motion. I hope this video helps you guys out and uh, thank you for watching.